Hello everyone, this is International Master Robert Jemison from Kids Unlimited in Melbourne, Australia. And today I thought we'd have a bit of a chat about openings. I'm getting a lot of questions on Reddit about uh, different opening systems and what's good against what and all that sort of stuff. So I thought we'd talk about general principles and I'll show you my opening repertoire. All right, so what's the aim of the opening that you choose? Basically, you are trying to get an opening or an opening variation which you understand better than your opponent. Okay, now to know an opening well, you need to know the book moves, but then also the general ideas and plans that follow once you get into the early middle game. It's no good playing out 12 book moves and then you think, what do I do? So you need to know that general plans that follow as well. Now, uh, my theory, of, well, there are two theories of openings. One, you could be like Ian Rogers, and he would play any opening. He'd play all sorts of openings all over the place. You just couldn't prepare against him because he was playing different openings all the time. It was very difficult, but that meant he knew them perhaps a little less well. On the other hand, you could be like me, and I specialised in particular openings. So you knew what I was going to play, you could prepare against me, but when we got to the actual game, probably I knew the ideas a little bit better than you because I play it all the time. All right. Um, if you really want to opt out and you don't want to spend too much time on openings, you can just play a, a system, say like you want to play the King's Indian attack. Sometimes I'd do this if I wanted to change my opening. You just set up a system, something like that. You're going to have a nice position uh, and you haven't had to think too much. Okay. Um, all right. So let's have a look at uh, my opening. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to choose a slightly obscure opening. So you're playing on my home ground and my opponent knows it less well and one that I can get into quickly. So I don't want to play 10, 10 moves of mainline theory and then hope to spring some brilliant move on you. All right, so generally I would start with E4. Now, my opponent probably plays E5. Most uh, low rated players go E4, E5. All right. Um, now, if you're an average to a newish player and you're playing reasonably fast time controls, why not have a think about the King's Gambit? Not very popular opening, though some strong players have played it, like Boris Baski, the world champion, he used to play it. And straight away, we're into your opening. And it's pretty aggressive. I remember the, the first time I ever had to play against the King's Gambit, I was playing in the Australian Junior, and some boy from Perth played it on me, and I'd never seen it before, and I got slaughtered because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, Black often reacts by taking or defending the pawn, but the, the best move is probably d5, the fault be a counter gambit, but, but not everyone does that. Um, I remember when I was playing correspondence chess, I wanted to get out of the, the book moves because everyone would look up the book moves in their, their modern chess opening book when they got home. So I invented my own variation. So here I played queen e2. And if they checked me, I ran away and hit on d1. My theory being that I get lots of free moves on the queen and seizing the center. So I invented my own variation, but it's probably not very good. All right, so what do I actually play these days? Knight f3, they generally defend with knight c6, and I play Rai Lopez. Very popular opening. But the main line that most players play is a6. If they play some other line, I'm not quite in my home ground, but I've got my fingers crossed they play a6. Then I go U beauty exchange variation. So now we're in my home territory. Fisher played this, Baskey played this. It's not a bad opening. Uh, and the main line is castling here. But when I was at the World Junior in Athens in 1970, uh, one of the seconds, a, a Yugoslav I am named Karaklaich, uh, who I became friends with, um, said, Robert, why don't you try knight c3? It's not really a popular move. So uh, your opponents really won't know what to do. And if, for instance, they play here, you might be able to trick them and, and win a pawn. 
and you've you've got them out of the mainline theory. All right, so I've been playing the exchange Lopez Knight C3 line in my uh, 10 minute online rapid game and going all right. All right, what if they play the French defense? All right, well, now you went to go D4 and D5 and off you go. Um, I don't want to do that. So I immediately go into the D3 line. So I'm setting up my King's Indian attack like we saw a minute ago. And off we go. And I get my King's Indian position and I get a bit of an attack on the King side and that's all fine and dandy. So move two, we're into my opening. Uh, what if they play the Sicilian defense? Very popular opening, I play myself. So what I do is I play C3. My dad's called the Alapin Sicilian. I think they just call it the C3 Sicilian now. Uh, so, so the normal line, of course, is Knight F3 followed by D4, but I'm playing C3. Now they have three lines. They can play E6 and D5. They can play Knight F6, line something like that, or they can play D5, get their queen out a bit early, and off we go. Uh, but I find uh, when I'm playing online against lower rated players, most people actually play this move, which isn't a particularly good move because I go here and I've sort of got the two pawns in the middle. So if you're playing at a, at a lower level, Try c3, you might get off to a good start against your opponent. All right, what else could they play? They could play the Karo Khan. I've been playing this a bit myself, actually. All right, so the normal lines are knight d2 or knight c3. Uh, I like to simplify, I play the exchange line. Get my bishop out, so his bishop can't come here. He will go here, I will go here. He might go here, I go here, and I've got a nice solid position. I try and control e5, um, very slight edge me, don't have to think much. I just go for my positional setup. Okay, um, so they're probably the main responses to e4. Um, what do I play as black? All right, let's say my opponent plays e4. All right, I'm a Sicilian defense chap. I, I used to, when I was younger, uh, play the Rubenstein French, which is swapping here. And then you perhaps go here and here, and you give white a little bit more space, but it's a nice solid opening. Uh, but then later on, I switched over to the Pelican or now called Sveshnikov variation. All right. So these, uh, this is the main line. And now, if we get this far, I'm able to hit him with my uh, Sveshnikov move, e5. All right, it's, it's positionally a little bit weak because I've weakened this square and this square that can't now be attacked by a pawn. But I've got a foothold in the center and it's pretty dynamic play. Now, the other good point about this is if you're playing a weak player, he will probably choose the wrong square to put this knight on. So like this knight can go to one, two, three, four, five. It's got six squares. Have a look, tell me which square do you reckon you should put it on? Have you decided? A lot of my opponents put it here. Not so hot. I play here and here. Uh, and they're in trouble on their e pawn. Or I can take and then play d5 very easily, and it gets slight edge black without any great problems. All right. What if they play the correct move, though? The correct move is knight here. So if someone does that on you, he's probably a reasonably good play. You need to be careful, but. This is a good line against weaker players because they don't do this. So he's threatening to come into the weak square. So we go here, he goes here, we go, go away, he goes here. Uh, and we have a nice unbalanced position. Uh, White is trying to get his knight here, so he's controlling d5. If I stop him, he might have to do it the long way around and 
eventually do something like this. But it's a good opening. And if White plays the first three or four moves of the Sicilian uh, with the normal book moves, e4, knight f3, d4, he can't really get out of the pelican. All right. Uh, what if my opponent plays d4? Now, I used to play the King's Indian, which is um, here and here and here and here and so on. But there are so many different setups for white. There's like at least half a dozen reasonably good setups. So there's a lot of theory to know. So uh, in, I think it was the late 70s, early 80s, an American player named uh, Pal Benko came along and he invented an opening, not surprisingly, called the Benko Gambit. So he would play the Benoni here, and when White plays d5, he would play b5, the Benko Gambit. Would you like a free pawn? The idea being we're swapping the free pawn for some development. So I played that quite a bit. Um, more recently, uh, I think they probably found some good lines against the Benko Gambit. So I just basically play a system against d4. I play the old Indian. Now, you're probably asking, what's the difference between an old Indian and a king's Indian? All right. The difference is, in the old Indian, your bishop goes to e7 instead of to g7. Maybe you have a position something like this, something like this. You play c6. And it's like my king's Indian attack when I'm white. I just go for the setup. There's nothing much can go wrong. I've got a pretty reasonable position. I know the plans can follow. For instance, maybe I can play here and here or something, or sometimes if the center's blocked, you play here and here and get rid of your bad bishop, things like that. So I played the old Indian. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, what if they play the English? There's a setup I like, which I actually showed you in uh, yesterday's video. So against the English, here's what I do. Now, this is important because I wait till they play knight f3, which blocks their f pawn. And then I go for a setup where my knight is on e7. So not on f6 blocking my pawn play, but on e7, so now I've got this as possible pawn play, and he hasn't. Could be something like this. I think Karpov played this sort of setup. Botfinnik played the setup. So you just castle, and you can either play f5, or you can play d5, or you can play this. Or sometimes you stop his play with pawn here. And it's a nice, easy setup. All right, well, that's probably enough. So I hope I've given you a feel for what sort of uh, things you're trying to do in the opening, what's, what the factors are you need to consider when you're choosing your opening. And um, it, it's often a good idea also to play, say, an opening system, Karakhan or something, for six months, and then swap and play the Sicilian for six months. So you're getting an idea of different setups and the ideas behind those openings. So that's a good way to improve and give yourself a bit more experience. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed today's video and uh, do well in your openings from now on, and I'll see you in the next video.